Jag kommer köra på engelska så att jag kan komma igenom historien i fem minuter. Har jag min första slide då? Jag gör det själv. Tekniken är inte så bra på. Ja, så how intelligent are the algorithms which claim to understand you? That's the question I'm going to look at today. And I saw about four years ago, there started to be these types of headlines in the news. How Facebook knows you better than your friends. And this was based on a research project where researchers had found that looking at what people liked was where you were able to predict what type of personality they had. And the extreme of this was that Facebook knows you better than anybody else. I really wanted to test if these things can really be true. And I started where everyone should start if they want to do an experiment. I started with myself. This is my Facebook profile. And what I did is I took what my friends were posting about and I made a spreadsheet with every type of post they made and their names and how often they posted on these different things. And I used my skills in applied mathematics. I used a technique called principal component analysis to try and reduce my friends to two dimensions. And this was the result I got of my analysis. I found three different types of groupings of people. This is a grouping probably some of you know. They're the all work, no play grouping. They're the type of people who post that they've maybe been to a conference like this one, L workshops that they've been in, everything to do with work. Then there's another grouping. You might know them on Facebook. They're the I think that grouping. They're the people who post about news. They post about Brexit. They post about politics. They post about sport. And they give your, their opinion about these things. Then finally, these are ones that you definitely know. These are the here I am people. These are the ones who post pictures of their dinner, pictures of their children, everywhere they've ever been on holiday, everything about themselves. And what's interesting here is that we can reduce, or this algorithm, the principal component analysis, can reduce everybody on Facebook, or it can reduce my friends in any case, to these three categories. And you recognize these categories. So in that sense, an algorithm really can understand you. And this is what Facebook use. They take the two billion people who use their service, they take the hundred of million things that they like, and they use principal component analysis to reduce it down to 10,000 advertising categories. So I've just got a few of these advertising categories because I think they're a bit fun. There's about 60 million people who Facebook classify as liking the British royal family. Maybe you've watched The Crown last night. I did. Um, then you've got like 10 million people who are upper middle class. You've got another million, tens of millions of people who they classify as neck. I think these are people who maybe need a massage. I'm not quite sure. And some of the, some of the categories are quite bizarre. There's, there's a few million people who they classify as platypus. So I don't really have an explanation for that one. But Facebook can certainly classify us. And then came this scandal, Cambridge Analytica. So this guy is Alexander Nix. What he claimed was that he could classify the personality of every American voter. And this guy, Chris Wiley, he agreed with him. He worked for Cambridge Analytica for a while. Then he started being a whistleblower and said that Cambridge Analytica influenced the American election using these personality type algorithms. Well, again, I'm a mathematician, so I started to try and check out whether this really could be the case. And my conclusion was that although you can identify people's personalities in a scientific way, the correlations aren't particularly strong. So this is a correlation graph showing a correlation between neuroticism measured in a psychological test and that predicted in Facebook data. There is a very weak correlation there, which is scientifically interesting, but it's not enough to build a personality algorithm. And when I've looked into a lot of these problems in, in my book, Outnumbered or Utrechnad, I have found that a lot of the things you hear about, like filter bubbles and echo chambers, when you look in them at detail, in detail and how the algorithms work, they're not as dangerous as we've been led to believe. One of the classic examples is fake news, which was really big about the Trump election. Fake news is spread mainly by bots. We're very skeptical about fake news when we hear it. And most of all, we simply can't remember fake news afterwards. So a lot of the things we've heard about algorithms have been misleading. And this isn't just in the media. It's also been, these, these guys here, this is uh, Max Tengmark. 
And he's, sat, he's, he's grouped together, or he's, he's got a group of a very diverse number of individuals here, all of who are working in the um, artificial intelligence. That's Elon Musk at the end there, the head of Google's DeepMind is there. And he asked all these people, do you think the world is going to be, or if there's going to be an artificial intelligence as, as clever as us in the near future? And all of these people answered yes. Well, I looked a bit more closely into this. I looked at where we are in AI today in biology. We can't have the intelligence of a dog. We don't have the intelligence of an insect. We don't have an intelligence of an amoeba. We have an intelligence somewhat equivalent to a bacterium, something that lives inside your tummy, making decisions about what to eat. So if you want to know more about the dangers of algorithms, I've said about a few things that aren't dangerous, but if you want to know about what the dangers are and what the dangers aren't, then my book is available. Thank you very much. I will not let you leave the stage before you tell us something about what we should really be worried about. Right. So I've had, I've had a few speakers talk about this today. The stuff to do with sexism and racism are very important problems and bias in AI because we train AI on data. And so that means it makes the same. It's, it's not very good. It's got a bacterial intelligence of data. So when it's trained on a lot of texts in Wikipedia and news articles, it makes mistakes of basic sort of sexist, racist mistakes. And so I look at that a lot in the book, but mainly we should be worried about that type of both bias and also when it just gets things wrong, when it, tells, when it says that people should spend longer in prison because it's just based on some algorithm which hasn't actually thought through and, and recognized the person. Those mm. are the problems that we should be worried about. Very good, and we can read more about them in the book, as I have. Here we are. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> there we are, and I'll take You'll that. Have that. Thank okay. you very much.